Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not even on my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, check it, man. We got a guy here, y'all. He don't need no introduction. We down here in Baton Rouge now. We hadn't been in Baton Rouge. This is our first time shooting in Baton Rouge. Y'all know we even been to Vegas, Cali. Y'all know we traveling. We everywhere. We on the move. The earth is our turf, yes, man. Yes, sir. And we couldn't come to the city. Without coming in and talking to DJ Bootsy, man. Listen, man, thank you for letting us come through. Well, I'm checking in. Check hey, in. Hold on. Before you check in, though, <laughs> I want to say welcome to Jigger City. Hey. Oh, that's what they call it. <laughs> Jigger City. Man, so. Why is it Bootsy, as in like Boot and C, or a Boot yeah, It's like Boot C. Boot. Like B O O T S I E. That's what I thought. Yep. Boots. Where you get that name from? I got to go get My it. My sister. Why she call you Bootsy? What well, that's supposed to mean? I mean, since birth. Since she birth. What did you do? Why she think that you were? I don't know. But what's so ironic is, up on learning my nickname, I thought it was my real name. Really? <laughs> and when I used to be in school, they used to be like, uh, they call me by my government name. Mm -hmm. You know, government name is Eugene, named mm -hmm. after my dad. So they would be like, Eugene? I say, I never answered. Uh, Eugene, no, Bootsy. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm here. So Man. all of the kids at school started calling me Bootsy. And then one of my favorite musicians is Bootsy Collins. Wow. That's hard. That's hard. I'm, who is Bootsy Collins? You know, I, I'm not into music. Didn't anymore, you hear so. his name the other day? Who? We just who? said it yesterday, too. Who? For some reason. I know Bootsy, but not Bootsy Collins. Who is that? Give, what? give us a song. No, but uh, is it the dog? Boosie was a part of the parliament okay. with George Clinton. Oh. And then he had his own spinoff of the parliament, which was the rubber band. I think it was the rubber band man, band. Hmm. I tried to give her that, that Q dog uh, uh, song. Ain't that the song? No, that's that's George Clinton. Exactly. Atomic Dog. Yeah, Atomic yeah. Dog. Yeah. So no, Boosie Collins. He broke off from there. Boosie Collins came up. Now I'm gonna give you a little history, mm. right quick. Since y'all done been to the West, hey. right. the classic sample of "I'd Rather Be With You." Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, is Boosie Collins' song. Mm. But the sample is actually N.W.A. "I'd Rather With You." Oh. I'd rather fuck with you, because I, I know mm -hmm. I can curse on you. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather fuck with you all goddamn night, because your pussy's good. Just pull up NWA, and you're going to hear that version, mm -hmm. and then type in Bootsy Collins, mm -hmm. and type in I'd rather be with you. Ah. And you're going to hear, like, you know, that type of music is is really a big, you know, West Coast sample type of thing. Man, uh, Bootsy, DJ Bootsy. Yeah. Like, like man, like I said, you you guys here in Baton Rouge got a a, a lot going on, man, when yeah. it comes down to the music. Um, you 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 know, you got to think about it, man. In, 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 in our history, when we start looking back, uh, I thought about, see, Steve Belo brought this up on my show. He used to be down here with... Yeah. Uh, 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 male and and what's the other guy? Turk and male. Turk and male. Yeah, I know. I know Steve. Yeah, Steve. That's my boy. Yeah. Right. Like like he been on Boss Talk one on one. He gotcha. rocks with me. Yeah. And uh, uh and I don't he think I ever met Steve, but through different people that I know, the name always comes through. Swishes and Doja. Exactly. Produced it for UGK. Yeah. Um. And so, did you ever you ever go to a UGK uh, concert or you ever lock lock uh, in with them boys? I never. Well, you know what? I never got a chance to see UGK okay. as a whole. But I've been to a bunch of Bun B concerts. And once I started DJing professionally, I also did street team work. So I did street team work here in Baton Rouge 
for a rap lot. Okay. That's hard. So, you know, I dealt with Zero, Bun B, uh, Scarface, the the UTP project with Juvenile. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I pretty much took care of Baton Rouge and surrounding areas when it came to promoting they albums when it was getting ready to come out when you had CDs and cassettes and all that stuff done in that era. Okay. So, you know, I dealt with a lot of that. You, you want, we forget the voice, you going through my phone. That's hard, man. Hey. You know, I, didn't, I, I remember back in the days, man, I used to turn the car around if I leave my phone at home. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, let me go get the damn phone. That's back hey. in the days, that's hey. not now. Hey. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so you got me in check hey. now. Yes. Damn. <laughs> I mean, hey. You're only as strong as your woman. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, so when you think about just uh, the the movement of this culture down here, when you when I first seen uh, Boosie, Lil Boosie, he was Pimp's uh, project. He was with Pimp. Pimp. Only reason I locked in to Boosie was because of Pimp C. Exactly. I'm being real. Yeah. I, in Dallas, they would uh, they would play. They would uh, give me a take. This is how they told me. They say, "Hey man, get this one right here. This dude named Boosie. He he Pimp C's uh, uh, artist. Oh, I'm telling. Yeah. You, that's how they told yeah. me. So when I heard it, the little voice it sounded weird to me at yeah. first. Yeah. You had to get used to it. Now I ain't gonna lie. I always rock with him, but when Webby came on the scene, I was like, damn. Is where because he came after yeah. people don't realize that I yeah. know because I'm old and I was listening. Yeah. So how did how but did see, that even happen? Well, the thing was before Boosie got with Trill, okay, which is Turk and Mel's label, which I can't remember exactly. I can't remember if it was Turk or if it was Mel, but one of them was cool with Pimp. Okay, can't remember if it was both or if it was one or the other. So he basically gave them the blessings on Trill mm. to start the company. And Boosie was actually with c -Loke before he was with Trill. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So Boosie, like the whole, the whole story is, and I mean, you know, it is a story. What's the story? Whole story is uh, CeeLo and a partner of mine named Frog. This was after the How You Do That There and all that mm -hmm. was put out. And of course, after, after the whole thing with, with CeeLo and the priority deal didn't go right. They did, you know, he came back, regrouped, and next thing you know, when he reemerged, it was the concentration camp. Oh. Mm. So now the concentration camp was literally CeeLo, Javon, and Max Minnelli. But then, instead of Yumbly, it was Boosie. Mm. So Frog knew Boosie and brought Boosie to CeeLo. And I don't know if, if if your listeners or your viewers who watch this show ever heard of Diamonds in the Dirt, but I think they should go. It's all over social media. It's all over like Tubi and stuff like that. They need to go watch Diamonds in the Dirt which was put together by Max Manelli to shine light on, per se, the diamonds in the dirt. Mm -hmm. So it talks about C. Loke and when he got with Master P and, you know, it talks about Max and it talks about Boosie and other artists that was coming up in Baton Rouge, like MC Nero's, like, it's, it's a big history of Baton Rouge music that that starts back in the 80s. Wow. Which is so crazy. That is crazy. So it's like everybody only knows about Boosie, Trill, Webby, you know, Kevin Gates and, you know, who y'all see now, which of course is Gates and Youngboy. Yeah. Fredo Bang and all them. Yeah. 
So it's like the 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 music in Baton Rouge. I mean, it's like before it was called Jigger City. It was just simple Baton Rouge. You had your different styles of music. You had your party music. You had your gangster music. So it's like that. That's pretty much how how it started. Wow. You know, um, when when I like I said. When I think about Baton Rouge, the, you know, the, the, the Boots and Webby era, that was an era. And then you think about the uh, Kevin Gates era because it came before the NBA Young Boy era. Yeah, right? exactly. So I'm looking at the phases of how it how it happened. Um, but when, when because Boots and Webby was hot. Yeah, Webby got yeah. real hot yeah. well, on that Savage Life, man. Yeah. So did, did you get a chance to, you know, link with these guys when they was doing that music? Like, not in the studio. Not, of course not. Not in the studio, but of course, Turk would always come to South Baton Rouge because actually, me and Boosie is from the same hood. Okay. We're just from two different parts of the hood. Okay. He's from across the tracks in the bottom. I'm from the bottom part. So okay. it's both in the bottom, but it's just you got the tracks that separate it. Yeah. So... Like I say, me, I'm all, like Boosie already had a fan base being with CeeLo, you know, off the concentration camp. Out How old was he when, when that was going to get? Like 15, 15. He had a, he had yeah. a, he had a following. Like 15, 16 years old. And you got to remember, this is no social media. That's what I know. <laughs> he had to be on it. So, and, but, but, so. but that PMC uh, cosign came after that. It didn't come before that. Yeah, it came after he already That's had right. a following. That's crazy. So man. what happened was Loke ended up going to jail. So he had to go and do, you know, he had to do some time. Of course. For some stuff. So rather than just hold him, he passed, he, him, he on. passed him on to Turkey Mail. Man. So... Before Webby came, they put out, which everybody knew, the green and yellow CD was the f most fire CD that was out. And it, was, it, it, it started the introduction to Trill as an entertainment company because everybody knew, per se, the name Trill from Pimp. Okay, mm -hmm. rapping, you know, with the on the UGK song. That's right. So it was like you knew UGK, but you only it was never a trill entertainment tied into it until afterwards. So once Boosie got signed, then you know you had the next album, which I think it was the Ghetto Stories, if I'm mistaken. And when they did Ghetto Stories, now everybody was introduced to Webby. So it was like, man, who the hell this nigga is? But what was so ironic about him, he was the, he was a gangster like Boosie, but he was the opposite. Mm. Cause if if you really listen to, if you really listen to Boosie, Boosie just Make those songs like he give you the gangster shit, mm -hmm. just as well as Webby. But when Boosie kind of is a resemblance to Tupac, okay, oh. with those heartfelt, those heartfelt songs, you know, like the My Nigga records or like just those records that that talks about pain. Mm -hmm. Which, if you're a big Tupac fan. Pac was that same way. Yeah. A he lot can, of people love those. He can make party music, but he can make those songs that you just feel like, man, I feel what Pac talking about. Like you, mm -hmm. you think about songs like Keep Your Head Up, mm -hmm. I Ain't Mad At You. Even some of the album cuts that wasn't even radio records, you can feel them. With Boosie, it was the same way, but it was the street records. And then here come Webby with Gimme That and Bad Bitch. So he had the females. 
So it was like you got the females and you got the gangster niggas. But he started moving. So of course when labels started looking at that because the thing is, you look at what Trill put together, the whole South region was on Boosie and Webby. Boosie and Webby, I don't care where you at. Alabama, Florida, mm -hmm. Mississippi, Texas. Texas. It didn't matter. Boosie, 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 Boosie. Webby, 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 Webby. But couldn't nobody else? They was like, man, how the hell they get down there from out of this region? It's like they make good music too, but it just didn't go as far as theirs. Wow. Um, when, when you think about Boosie, he, he said something before he moved out from down there. He said that he couldn't stay here because of, um, you know, you need to leave your your. You need to leave your city. What, what do you agree with that? I agree. I totally agree. Why? Why do? Why do you think it's like that for the for the for the artists? Well, for one thing. And is that just here? No, that's, I mean I think that's anywhere. So any artist, if they're from that place, should leave that place. Yeah. And you agree with Boosie leaving? I agree. Because, I mean, think about it. When you look at Young Dolph, killed at home. Yeah. Killed in Memphis. Yeah. You look at... Uh, Mo3. Mo3. Killed in Dallas. Nipsey. Killed in L.A. Killed in L.A. You look at... I'm trying to remember the But list. you got to think about this. To me... You can always move out, but they have family there. They're going to go back and visit at one point or the other and then go right back home. If it's meant for them to pass away there, somebody want to catch them there, they're going to catch them Young there. Young greatness is another I just thought mm -hmm. about. Yep. You understand what I mean? But see, I'm going I'm to I'm give you my, t my two or three things I see about the whole ordeal. Because one... I look at it like this. Of course, you deal with the crab in the bucket mentality. Right. That's one part. The second part is, especially down south, you know, you deal with the racist part, mm -hmm. the bigotry part. And, you know, like those are the, are the two main things why you really want to move. Because either niggas is trying to kill you or the white folks is trying to put you in jail. Like, you can be trying to live comfortably and it's still, you got to you gotta know how to, how to maneuver and how to move and grow. Like, I learned some, some valuable things from Master P. Wow. You know, like prior to, because I DJ for him also. Right. So prior to me DJing for him, I just used to move recklessly. You know, I used to let people know, you know, whether I, where, I, where I was going to be and stuff like that. And since then, I don't call nobody. I don't tell nobody nothing. You know, you want to come to the concert, just meet me at the, you know, I'll, I'll leave some tickets at Will Call. Yeah, yeah. Some stuff like that. You know, it, it really got to be somebody who I really, like, rock with like this to give them a location or stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you have to, like, you look at the takeoff incident. Mm hmm Like, being in the public eye, and, you know, you look at what happened to Takeoff, you look at what happened to PNB Rock, you even look at what happened to Nipsey. All those people have, a, they had security. That one particular time security wasn't around them and look what happened. Mm -hmm. I think at all points in time, if you are making this particular type of money, the one thing P always told me was, I'm trying to make it back home to my family. Yeah. 
Simple as that. Let's go back, though. I want you to tell me how you end up linking with Peter B, right. the DJ. You got to give me the details on that. Well, actually, I've always had a good relationship with different people from No Limit. Okay. Back in that heyday. So, I ended up becoming Mr. Magic's DJ. Okay. R.I.P. Magic. I was his DJ, which... He actually became big brother, spiritual advisor, wow. and so much other stuff. How old were you at that time? I was, damn. I wasn't young. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yes, I sir. I was. How old see. were you when you started DJing? I started DJing like at 15. Okay, so you started so, really young. Yeah, I started. Like, but you just were doing, doing it stuff. for a while before that opportunity started. Yeah, like, okay. I, I, like I was DJing while I was in high school. But it was just like my grandmother might have like club meetings and stuff at her house and I'd just be playing music there. And then that turned into, we would do block parties on our street with other family members in the neighborhood. And I started DJing there. And then starting in 2000 is when I actually just took it seriously. Mm -hmm. So I started learning the road started learning the game from the club owner and the DJ who I was dealing with. And I just started dealing with different artists. Cause I used to always meet Mac, Magic. Like I met all them. The only ones I would never see was P, Mia X, Mr. Servon. So you saw like, everybody else but, but them. But everybody else I would always run into because you know, like I told you earlier, me and CeeLo are partners. We, we still is partners right now to this day. So C Murder used to come to his house. Mm -hmm. And we used to go shoot basketball because LSU's campus is literally like walking distance for me from where I live to campus. So I used to always link up with them. And then I became good friends with the different street team guys that worked for them then became friends with security with big pokey v90 and all them and then the guy that actually linked me up with Pete, Pete. Mm -hmm. was my boss at the radio station okay my friend jay tweezy okay so some of his friends were my friends so they came to a club i was djing at and was like man yeah your boy getting ready to come back because He's finna be the program director for Max 94.1, which is the hip hop station here in Baton Rouge. So when he came back, he brought me in. So I started learning the ropes of radio and what I needed to do this, that, the other. And then probably I started, he brought me on in 04. And I was hired literally the week, either like like a, a week or two before Katrina hit. Wow. I was hired to work at the radio station. And then, you know, I'm still at the radio station to this day. Hey, that's good doing, stuff. Doing all kind of other stuff, you know, along with doing a mix show on the urban station. I have my own radio show on the, uh, CHR Rhythmic Station, Q106. Okay. Plus, I'm the program, not program, I'm the production director over there too. So, you know, in order to stay in certain things, you have to learn how to do more than one thing. Let me ask you this. Um, my Shout out Trill Talk, No Pill Talk. He sent this question in. He says, did you say that Lil John stole your ad lib? No, he didn't steal my ad lib. Well, you stole his? A partner of mine. One of one of, look, one of my partners who The Yeah? Like, just like my brother. The Yeah. More than the Yeah. <laughs> the whole style? More than the Yeah. What was his my name? My partner, DJ Incredible. Okay. He from Alexandria. Lil John met him out there in okay. Alexandria. And if you really think about it, and if you listen to who you with, yeah, 
compared to after who you with, you notice the difference. Yeah. LeJean didn't have the yes and the what's and all that. Incredible. Yeah, and I can vouch for this because I was in the club all these times when he was DJing at this club. And it just so happened, Lil John came in town for the night and came to the club. And Incredible was saying, what? Yeah. The same way. And it's really a lot of Baton Rouge style that Atlanta stole. So you saying that your partner, what the heck was Lil John doing down here anyway though? Just a, he, he had a show or? No, he didn't have a show. He was just down here, just, you know, like, I guess he was down here, you know, doing, doing radio work, you know, cause at that time, I think he just signed with TVT at that time. So when he gets back and you hear him for the first time doing that, where were you at and what were you doing? And what I did never, you think? I never really paid attention. I was just like, oh, okay, he's doing something different, you know? Because it, it was the same thing, like who you're with, but it was just more amped up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You just didn't put two and two together. And I just didn't put two and two together, and then me and Incredible was talking, and it was like, that nigga stole my shit. Because he literally was saying those things. All the time. All the time, in the club. And see, that was the thing like the club he DJed at and the club I ended up DJing at, which was Vibes, like this club everybody would go to and when this club shut down at two o'clock, everybody would go to the other club because it didn't close till four because it's outside of the city limits. Mm -hmm. So you would always hear like incredible by him being from Alexandria, Louisiana, Natchitoches area, you would hear he would play what was hot here, but he would also play the Houston music. He would play the Atlanta music and stuff like that. Whereas you go to the club across the river that didn't close to four vibes, that DJ there, he's really from New Orleans. His DJ name is DJ New Orleans. Wow. So those two was my, like, those who I came up under. So I just put they styles Mm -hmm. and made it my style. Mm -hmm. Cause the shit I talk on the mic comes from incredible, but the other style is a mixture of both of them. Mm -hmm. So when you go, like he will play a lot of the same stuff, but then he will play the bounce records from New Orleans. He will play like the partners in crimes and stuff like that. And of course, anytime you saw either an artist from No Limit or an artist from Cash Money on somebody else's record, you wanted to listen to that record because that might be a record that you ended up breaking at the club. Mm-hmm. So it really, you know, it just really, it really fucked me up when you, like, you go from, who you with? Who you with? Who you with? Get crunk, who you with? Mm-hmm. And then maybe a year later, you hear, be a beer, and it's like, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm like, man, that nigga sound like you, man. Cause what people don't know is, the be a beer is actually, they made them clean it up. Mm. Cause the original version is just a bitch. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. With China White, who is my good friend, and uh, Too Short. How the heck you know China White? That's my girl. Where you meet her at? Like, what's funny about that shit? Like I told you, with me being the DJ at the club, he brought me in in, in at Vibes, and the thing he actually like schooled me on was how to get in contact and you know just have relationships with the artists. Mm-hmm. So. We ended up doing China White and CeeLo for New Year's Eve one one year, and then I mean she's a good she was a good friend to Magic, and then she might like that's my that's my girl. Wow! So I, like, what did you think about her style and just her her? China whole, White, I mean, I her like, delivery and all that. 
What song she sang? She got. Um, well, she was on Be a Bill. She, yeah. she really never got a chance she, yeah. to really just do her own, do her own thing. Like she, she ended up having like other songs that ended up making it on certain soundtracks mm -hmm. or whatever. Cause she got a song called What They Want with uh it's actually two versions. It's a version with just her on it, but the ad libs it has one of the Yin Yang twins on it. Okay. But then she, the other version, it has one of the guys from the Yin Yang twins on it. She mm -hmm. got that. She actually had a song called Girls Get Booked with uh with P on it. Wow. But it's just certain records with her. And then you gotta think at that time, it was it was hard for you to see a bunch of females. Really, one at a time. Yeah, it was like one or two at a time. It's still kind of like that. But no, it ain't like that, no. Nah. <laughs> Cause you have. When I think about the one who be the hottest at the time, I just put it like that for me. You like, don't have like you have phases. Bunch. Yeah, see, you only had like back then. You had Mia X. You had who else? Like we can go back even further. You, you can't only just had say you pepper. had Mia, Mia X. You had Salt and Pepper. You had uh, well, MC Light you, but before that. But, but no, yeah, no. What I'm saying, but I'm saying, EVE. What I'm saying in that era, seeing that Which era, era, that era when No Limit was hot. You had Mia, just Mia, just Mia, and you had Mia, maybe Trina. You had but I don't even Kim. think no Kim. Kim wasn't. Kim had them went back. She had them went down because Biggie got killed then. What year are you talking about? I'm talking about like 97 to 99. That was right after that. You know, she when came out with, Brown she out? came out, that was before. Foxy and, and Kim were together. 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 But, but you know, but she Foxy, had. Foxy was on Mia's out, on Mia's song. The party don't stop. Mm -hmm. So it's just really like you had, because you had Yo-Yo, you had like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you ain't have Lady Rage, you had different ladies. Yeah. But see, it was like for it was so hard for Rage because she was dominated by a bunch of bunch men. Did, yeah. And Mia was the same way, but Mia holds her ground. It's like Mia was like Mike Tyson. Like she <laughs> she was punching at your ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mia was different though. Yeah. That was that it was different. That was a different time. That so, was a different time, different place, different era. Different, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that was a that was a get it out the mud era. Yep. You know, and that's the whole game. So when you think about just the whole that whole movement, it was a different time. But China White, China White was uh, one of them one of them ones that that when you think about China White, man, uh, that her just she was, that, she when she on, did her thing, she did her thing. Yeah, and she, and like, she was on nice songs. So. Yeah, like she was on Be a Beer, and it's like when you heard her, she it took was her, like she went in. Ooh. And then when I found out she was from New Orleans, I was like, shit, no. <laughs> and like, I found out who she was connected to. Fuck. Like, she was connected to Magic, KL. Like, she was connected to all them. I was like, why the fuck? P ain't signed up. It's and, and see, I'm, I'm going to tell you something you probably don't even know. China White was on a No Limit album. Which one? The twins, Cain and Abel. Okay, I didn't know that. The Seven Sins, The Basement. She was on there. Yeah, with Mia. She was on there with Mia. And I can't remember who the I other person was. I gotta look it up and see. But yeah. she wasn't China White. Well, who was she? <laughs> <laughs> you, go, when you listen to it, you gonna hear. Wow. Trust me, I so, told you. So. I know my shit. You got, it. You, got, you, got, you got, but you got an ear for the music, man, yeah. and a love for uh, DJing, man, and 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 to be down here. Uh, how hard is it for uh, do the do the artists get their recognition through the radio, you know, play down here, or do they mm -hmm. do the, like the mainstream? Because I I never been here, but I know in some cities it's hard for the local artists to get on the radio. It's it's kind of somewhat. It is a lot of politics. It's politics, but it's not politics. The whole thing is like when they come and ask me, man, I want, man, I want to get on the radio. Cause your shit hot in the streets. And I was telling them that when JT when Jay Tweez was the program director, because if you like what they got to understand is a story with music. 
if you have a story, so just look at it. If you have a hundred cars pass by that's bumping NBA young boy, and then you got another hundred cars bumping the same young boy song, it makes it easy for me to go to bat and say, man, we need to play this record when I go to my boss or if I put it in mix show rotation. Because now, in this day and age, you have, you know, playlists, you have this, you have that. So it's at a point now to a certain degree, radio is last where back in the day, was radio first. was first. Yeah, yeah. So my thing is, they come in, you know, they come up to me like, yeah, man, man, they bumping my shit. Who bumping it? Man, they playing my shit at this club, that club, that club, and the other. They playing me in this city too. So if I call this DJ, he gonna tell me you, they playing your shit? Cause I pull, I pull a phone call on you real quick. Tell me about the, the Kevin Gates era when when he, cause he was before NBA a, a young boy. I just want to hear like what did you think when you and what part of town, what, what part of Baton Rouge, and did, how did you hear about him? Just well, Kevin Gates actually first started with Dead Game Records. Okay. So Dead Game Records was independent label straight out of Baton Rouge, actually. Guys I grew up with is who started it. Okay. So they had an artist named Kevin Gates. His first record was a reggae style type song called Getting Away. Okay. Which I liked the record. But, you know, certain people liked it, but that song I figured was more Kevin Gates than the other music he had put out after that. So, of course, to to really the thing with the thing that's so hard with Baton Rouge is they they kind of want what they want. Like if you try to go do a specific type of style of music, they want gangster shit. They want that D boy shit. That's what they want. So if you lay around. Like the gates you hear now was was him, is really him. So it's just like, you know, the party songs he did, the, the street shit he was doing, is what got him good in Baton Rouge. But of course, the other songs that everybody, the gates that everybody is hearing now, is more like his crossover type shit. Yeah, because, you know, when you think about it, you know, I, when I first seen him, it, 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 it messed me up, man. But I always, like I said, Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge again, BR again. And then after that, it was like, damn, you know, uh, is, is it going to be, who is going to be next? And then that's when I started thinking, dang, here go NBA Youngboy. Yeah. But NBA Youngboy is something different, man. Totally These kids different. from little, bro. Little, yeah. All the way up. Man, that's that. Kale, what's going on, baby? What's going on? <laughs> Had to drop in. Man, how I'm you doing? Partner, my partner in crime on the new limit to you. <laughs> man, so what's going on, Gail? You know, I'm here for Boosie. You know, that's my brother, you know. Yeah, man. So, man, you you know, when I when I uh, come down, you know, I, I got with him. He told me about you, man. I said, man, I got to rock with this dude, man. See what's going on in the BR. Because this is my first time here. And really... I ain't saying here, but passing through, I passed through a lot, yeah. but I never stayed. You know what I'm saying? And uh, but when I met K, I'm like, I gotta get over to BR, man. I was like, I gotta go see what's going exactly. on. I already love the music, you know. But I, like I said, NBA Young Boy is something different, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he appealed to the kids all the way up. They they keep coming on the show talking about him. He put a song out on YouTube. It just goes crazy yeah. anytime. So when you first heard about him, like how was that, and and when was it? Actually, my business partner, who I have a studio, a recording studio with, actually used to record him. Okay. And you know, he had brought him to my attention, but I was like, you know, okay, okay. And then probably he dropped, he dropped 38 Baby, so. Yeah. 
And that that's what that was on. And I'm like, the fuck this the nigga here. Because the whole thing is, see, when your kids start bumping them, that's what I was saying. It wakes you. <laughs> it, it wakes you up. It's like so now, you know. I have a well Wednesday. I have a fifteen year old. Yeah, my yeah. Fifteen year old daughter. <laughs> she'll be fifteen. Yeah, my and my I have son. A, and I have an eighteen year old son that bugs the hell out. Well, he don't bug me. He he, he sings, young boy, like. <laughs> Like he a fuck like he fucking NBA young boy. <laughs> he he, he loves his music. And I'm like, so you know, in this day and age, you ain't gotta worry about asking. Shit, just shazam the shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In this era shit. So, you know, it's like it's just like young boy, Fredo Bang. Yeah, I was gonna get to him. You know, that, that's, it, that's, that's it's, it's like, you know, Ride Wave, like all them, all, all, all them is like Rod Wave just did a show here, and I didn't go, but I saw the video, and it's like this motherfucker. He filled it up quick. It's selling out arenas. Yeah, yeah, he ain't playing no games. And it's like, shit. Like he doing what a Drake, you know, like them type of artists is doing in arena. Like he ain't no, you can't bring him to no damn club no more. You right. You gotta, you gotta, do you gotta him. book him, yeah. maybe yeah. yeah. because he crossed over too. Yeah. He got a lot of people yeah. like KL. Did you ever see this coming? Like the way these these young artists is is like like with the way they do it now too. Because back back, you know when we 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 hey we go back and it's cassette tapes and all type of hand to hand. You know what I'm saying? But now they they moving different. Did you ever see this coming? No, no. And and then on top of it, I wasn't pre I wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> I don't think nobody was prepared for it. That's it moved crazy fast too. It's like when you come from the era that we in, it's very hard to just transition to the new shit. Yeah, yeah. Because with me, like perfect example, right? Um, when we recorded Mystical Ready to Rumble album. Okay. Um, this is when Pro Tools was just transitioning into the new recording, right? So um, when we started that record, I was like, um, called Jive and like, y'all had to send me some more reels. They're like, man, you don't have Pro Tools yet? And I'm like, no, what's that? What is it? You know? And then they put me on and what it was, and I'm like, okay. Because I have, as a matter of fact, we bought Chris Clay Studio, me and Craig B. And um, we had a two inch reel. And um, when they told us about that, you know, I was like, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not on it yet. I'm make, you know, I don't know it, what is it? Yeah. And it was just a new transition. But like right now from where we coming from, it's not like we was in the middle of the new and the old. Like we were straight from the old. So Correct. it wasn't a transitioning point to me. You know what I'm saying? So just, just as well like some of the artists that he named. Every artist that he just named, I know their name. I'm familiar with their name because my kids talk about them. But if you put them in front of me, I wouldn't know who is who. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, you know. So I, I just talked to Booster before he came. I'm like, man, I gotta get some new music from you, bro. <laughs> yeah. I just told him because, yeah. like, I get a lot of calls for DJing and, like, because I wasn't doing it other than the tour. You know what I'm saying? And me traveling with Mystical or whatever, and a lot of people starting to call me for for gigs, and I had to just kind of just let them go because I'm not familiar. I'm familiar with some of the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not enough of enough the new of the music. music. That's right. And so that's why I got with like Spin, Boosie, Captain Charles, you know what I'm saying? And um, like uh, Rise Smooth. And they just kind of put me on like, you know, with a lot of the uh, the stuff that's going on. But You, you know, coming, coming from where we come from, you know, like you, you seen cassettes, you seen CDs, you thought that was huge. Yep. Right. You know what I'm saying? Really, like when you first seen the CD, you like, man, 
You know, like you can put all these songs on here. I would throw like dang, and it's quick and it's easy. And you didn't think I, me personally. I was like, this ain't going nowhere for a while, and it didn't right. last long. Just think about how fast when the minute the iPod hit. Right? Look how fast it came and went. Yeah. <laughs> From you buying an iPod to now it's on your phone and on your watch. For real. That's it. Yeah. That's crazy. And then when you really look at it, it's just like he was saying with the transition. It's just like with me DJing, like I went from vinyl. Yeah. So just imagine taking six crates or taking a big, like a, a, a big trunk yeah. that you can roll with number records in it and taking that to transition into CDs. Right. And you having buku books of CDs to right. now, it's on a laptop. On a laptop. Or some, uh, hard, or something this big. Or a like cell phone. That. Yeah. That's so, crazy. So it, it's, it's like, the thing that's so crazy is, like, you really got to stay ahead to be a head. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just like, yeah. You got to have a backup to a backup. But the music, like 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 when 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 the music went digital like it did and it almost seemed to lose value, but then they tried to figure it out as it was changing and transforming to streaming. And I think that was something that that took people by surprise somewhat as well when it first happened. That's why I think like right now it's so easy to be an artist because you can't take a loss, no. not a big loss, you know. Just think about it, Boots. It was like the process and the money it took to buy a beat and pay for studio time. Like right now, it wasn't no thing about, yeah, my, my partner got a, uh, a little setup in his room by his closet to where you literally had to go yep. and buy studio time. Mm -hmm. And like I said once before that, even when you bootleg music back then. Oh man, I remember You that. had to buy blank CDs, get jackets made, buy the casing, buy some, uh, pay somebody to print up the J cards. Yeah, yeah. And selling them. So even when you was bootlegging, you had to spend money. You had to spend money. Yeah. That's, that's it, man. And now it's different. And the only money you really got have to spend on is going buy the equipment. That's it, right? You know, you can go in and per se, like I can come to you and get your Pro Tools sessions, get the plugins and everything, and put it on my computer. Uh, like if right. you know somebody that's that's smart enough to make sure you have everything. You know, you can go get a mic like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. you know, you still gotta spend money, but you ain't gotta spend money. Right. Yeah, to, yeah. To yeah. go to go to, well, yeah, man, I'm going by KL to record. Man, I can record <clears throat> you right here. Right. <laughs> so, the punching in thing, did it get more popular later on? Or because I'm, I'm asking you this, KL, or or, or or were they punching in early on? No, you see what I'm saying? They no punching in always was there. Okay, but you look at it like, um, right now, it's to a point to where it, the way it's used now is kind of how like auto tune is. Okay, but one thing about it is when you when you do go to studio, the studio is to perfect it as well as you can get it, which is understood. But like with auto tune. Auto tune was for corrections to okay. where you get an artist up in there and they'll go sing. If they hear like one one word or two out of key, they'll just go to that one word and fix it. Mm -hmm. But now they're just running everybody. The whole thing, everybody just running their whole song Auto through tune. it to where their music, their vocals sound flawless. Yep. But then when they have to perform, Live. <laughs> Man. That's when it shows and that's when it hit. Yeah. That's it. I done seen and, it. And, and that's see why the, I'm laughing. And see the bad part about it is you have to have the auto tune with with you to perform. That part. Because if you don't, they gonna you're gonna be exposed. Exposed. 
And, and that's crazy <clears throat> because you would think they would want to. Now, I, I, I heard we, we was in Vegas and I seen T-Pain and, you know, he started it off strong with that auto tune. But this dude actually can sing and everything. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I listened to him and, and without any of that. And he was going in. But see, the way T-Pain used it, he more he used it more more of like an effect. Yeah. Instead of I'm a correct fix everything yeah. to uh, he's not correcting me. anything he's right. just using it kind of like how future uses it per okay se. right you know, yeah and um he just made it into another instrument where everybody else is using it as like kill is saying to correct or carry them right. through the song the reason i mentioned the the the, the punching in is because i was just interviewing uh dj burn one down in uh atlanta and Burnham, he was like yeah. shout out burn one he was like uh he had some youngsters in the studio trying to punch in, and they was taking forever, and he hated it, he said, because, he said, but he had Bun that flew in, and Bun just did his, Bun <laughs> put his right. down. It was already put down so fast and right. left, he didn't have time for all that. Because this, 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 like, this is the difference of the transition from the old generation to the new, to where, like, Boots, you know what we did. When we made records back then, it was no thing of send me some beats. You had to come into the studio. That's how like a lot of classic records yeah. is here. No email. Right, it wasn't no email. It wasn't no you, email. You had to come to the studio with the producer and y'all was gonna get up in there and bang something out. But you know, how long did it take though, was it? Right, hold up, but see this, this is what I'm getting to. Like the punching in part is like, the artist will get with the producer, they, they find a beat, then the artist will write to the beat. And so, as he writing to the beat, he's learning the lyrics as he's writing them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And by the time he go through the process of writing these lyrics, because just think about it, like when you writing, when you writing lyrics, you may be going over this line at least 15 to 20 times thinking and trying to think about what was the next line that's gonna follow. Mm -hmm. So you rehearsing this line and line until the next one come. And by the time you do that and go through the whole process of getting a verse, you didn't study the whole record. Man. So when, like you saying, when Bun got in the boot, by him rehearsing this line over and over and over of learning and trying to create the next one, he know it. He know it. So by the time he go in the boot, you know, the only thing he thinking about is perfecting it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Until what, what Boosie was saying is, is more like the artist, they'll get up in there, they'll think of it, you know what I'm saying? And before you know it, the first thing coming ahead, they come to the head, they'll run it. But, you know, when you have an engineer behind you, nah, man, what, what you said? I, I ain't get it. They're not saying it right. They're mumbling their words. You know what I'm saying? They're smoking getting high and blah, blah, blah. And see, and that is the whole process of why it takes so long from them, for them to recall records because they do not, you know what I'm saying, study. They just come up with something right then and there. And most of the time, some of them will do it and they'll rec they may get luck up and record it faster, but don't know the records. Do you think when it's time to perform? Do you think it's because people you hear the statements like Jay Z didn't write or he don't write or or Lil Wayne don't write <clears> or you know you hear these things and these kids hear this stuff and they automatically they trying to be rappers. It's mm -hmm. a bunch of rappers, guys. I see them all day. They in my inbox right. all day. And and but they tip me. I don't write. You know, <laughs> like okay, you need to write. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like. It. <laughs> You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, the whole thing is, you you have to really be a perfectionist to even do what a P did, to do right. what a Wayne did, Jay Z, or whoever. Because trust me, if you would ever told me back then that P did not write his words, I was like, bitch, stop lying. It took me to see for himself, myself. He don't write. Wow. Never did. He go Never. punch. He punches no. in. Let me tell you something. He is the perfect example of when they say he didn't write shit down. Now, you can look at Wayne and Jay. They're probably not writing it down. But 
they come up with these lines and they, they, they keep them in their head. You know what I'm saying? To where, like they say, practice, you know, you come it, better. It, it, you better, so, better. So when you, we, we talking about some artists that probably before the writing down shit came in, right? They were probably already at least eight albums into their career. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So practice make perfect. So when you do this enough, anything comes easy to you. But the average artist that's saying this here right now, right? How long have they been in the game? And the ones I'm talking about ain't been in at all. Hardly. Okay, they ain't even got a hit yet. They ain't even did a project, full thing. project. They just like I, I think it's a popular thing that they <clears throat> latched on to because they see the grace saying it, and they like, man, I'm gonna say I'm, I can't write. That's gonna be just that's gonna make me look away. You know what I mean? Right. They, they trying to do exactly what what everybody else is trying to do. Right. Because think about it. They, if they going in there th thinking that they can rap <laughs> without even writing it down, even if you writing it in your phone, in your phone, then you you going you going you getting yourself caught up in the wrong thing. Because think about it, you trying to go and be a Wayne or a Jay Z, but you don't even know where you trying to go. But the that punch, but, but that made the punch in thing more predominant is what I'm thinking. More people start punching in because they trying not to write. You know what I'm saying? You see, the, the punching in the thing is when you don't want to take time to write. Yep. That's why if, if you listen to everybody's song right now, right, everybody's trying to outdo everybody doing the same shit. Yep. You think about it, you're yeah. trying to rush the process. That part. Yeah, yeah. And you then you got to think about this here too, like, you know, a lot of the labels can take fault for this because even like they're still trying to catch a lot of labels is trying to catch up and redo what No Limit did like when we what up 98 when we dropped like 20 some albums yeah 20 some you know, that's a lot to keep up with yeah yeah and the thing about it is that when we was dropping them records like that um even though it was one project but it was eight people working on it. Man, that's a lot. Like, like that's a lot of projects, man. Like you didn't see that. That you don't see it like that anymore no. for sure. It's I mm -mm. ain't no, no. And, and even during that time, you didn't see nobody just come back and work like that. Right. You may get two or three, but you're not for getting no twenty nothing. You know what I mean? No, no. And not and and, and it be popping on the charts. And think right. about you it. know what I mean. Out of out of all of the independent labels that I've seen, they never did with with KL and P and No Limit did in that era. You know what I'm saying? Like Ruthless Records, Death right. Row, none of them. Not not even you know <clears throat> Rap a Lot. But right. you think about it, even about it, the movie, the, mm -hmm. that you didn't see people doing independent nothing. That, when I first seen Pete doing that and y'all doing that, it tripped me out. It made me feel good because I was like, man, you know, they doing their thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But the independent thing, like everybody's there now, of course, because they have to be because a lot, yeah. a lot of people not even pulling a lot of people right. in. And they you got opportunity to go independent because it's direct to consumer. But, right. but you guys did it in a time when it really wasn't just a popular thing to even be a part of. Yep. You see what I'm saying? When you where y'all was just straight up putting bags up. I know when I talked to Big uh, uh, Court, you know was, he put he even did a movie. You know what I mean? Right. So stuff like that. That that's amazing, man. It's before your time, is what right, I'm saying. Right. Right. You didn't see that. And right. When you really look at it, I mean, you you look at what what that what they did with. He basically did what Michael Jordan was doing. When Jordans came out, everybody was waiting on them bitches to come out. That's right. right. When they put out CDs, everybody was waiting on that movie sure. to come out. For sure. For sure. Which one? Which what 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 project sticks out the most to you, Kel? As far as when you were doing all those twenty, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of damn projects, man. G Ghetto D was a, it, it was either out of Ice Cream Man and Ghetto D because Ice Cream Man, oh the first true album because. The first body was first introduced on the first True album. Yeah, yeah. Then we did the Ice Cream Man album, 
Did we'll put about it even there. But we did albums in between. Now, when we did Ghetto D, Ghetto D is the 400 Degrees of No Limit. Mm. Mm. That That's, crossover album. Right. Yeah, yeah. And truthfully, you think about like, like make them say, uh, it's like that was probably like when we did that record, it was more of, um, that was probably the biggest, that was a double platinum single back then. You know, Ghetto D peaked out at its peak was at four million back then. So it have to be that album. Um, Ghetto D. Ghetto D. That's hard, man. Because Ghetto D was the first album when everybody started. That's when Mac and Fiend made their debut. Yeah. Um, that's when uh, the first album when Beast by the Pound was fully formed. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go back a little bit, though, also on Soldier Slim. I seen you on a documentary just here recently. Mm -hmm. I said, that's my boy, that's my guy right there, man. And so that documentary, it just kind of, you know, it brings back, I, I guess 50 Cent is doing something on, on uh, uh, what it, was it called, some hip hop homicide? Yeah. Right. And, and I see you on there. And so what did you think about the <laughs> project once you seen it? Well, when I looked at it is that, um, it was it was stuff in there that, that still wasn't, say it but it was more like um the people who knew of slim finally had a chance to see what he really meant to the city okay you know people know him by name but until you hear the people from the city talk to let you know how and what he meant to the city he was some he was something serious and i always say like Lyrically, Slim wasn't the best lyrically, but Slim could go. But when you talking about that street shit of the city of New Orleans, that's just like within Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? It's just like in Baton Rouge to where, I was just thinking about this the other day, Bruce, is that if I'm to break down Baton Rouge, right? Artists. Okay. C. Loke, the big dog godfather. Okay. Nobody has made a big, big made bigger hits than Webby. You right. Nobody's not going out against the Boosie. Um, Max Manelli and Fox lyrically, and nobody's not going out club. Motherfucking um, level, level, level is the, the, the he the club king. He the club anchor king. Yes, that's, that's one person we ain't talked about yet. Oh uh, yeah, level. Yeah, talk to me a little bit. Nobody about Nobody is gonna out club bang this man, bro. He banged the club out. He is right. the club he club banger king. king. They gave like, him that name. They gave him the name. You, he gonna make the it, like, it gonna go crazy. Like he 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 go. been in the game eighteen years. <clears throat> yeah, damn near like fifteen to eighteen years. Mm -hmm. And consistent. Yeah, consistent hits, hits for the women, hits for the niggas, dance records. He owned it. He owned it. Man. Then he went into. One of Mouse's hardest records that he put out when he was with Trill. Yeah. Called Turn the Beat Up. Flipped this shit and called it Going Hard. Put that bitch out in 2010. Mm -hmm. And motherfuckers still playing it right now. Right now. Like it just came out. Yeah. It's like, timeless. Like, I'm gonna put it to you like this about Baton Rouge. And it's the same thing with New Orleans. You can literally go to those two cities and literally if the DJs really want it to, you won't hear no other record in either one of these cities because they have so much 
history of mm -hmm. music right. between the two cities. I mentioned, um, I mentioned Bo Boosie, we did a while ago, but Mo3, we mentioned Mo3, me and you did. Yeah. His documentary came out this week, it came out after uh, the So Slim uh, right. the documentary. When you heard him on the tracks with uh, Boosie, Boosie, what did you think about those songs that, that he was doing? Man, R.I.P. Mo three. That, that that dude. Uh, yeah. If if would have had if what happened to him hadn't happened, he was about to be that next nigga to come out of Dallas. Like, cause I mean I get people come and ask me to till this day to play man play Mo three. Mm hmm. So it's just, it's just, unfortunately, his time got cut. Right. And I think I think the one thing these these artists got to understand is if you in the streets, <clears throat> you got to decide. You want to be a D boy, or you want to be an artist. Can't be both. You can't be both. Well, let me ask you this: When you was dealing with whether it was uh, Soldier Slim or any of those artists, because you you had to deal with a lot of, being that you straight lace. When I meet you, I see you, and everybody tell me you business, you straight business. How hard was it keeping you know that from coming into your world when you was when you well, was basically working with everyone? It was it was more like with Slim. Slim took all his street problems and put them on and put it on record. That's what his mom said. That's what he did. Like, I, we'd be in the studio in the basement on the parkway, you know. He'll, he'll call me way at Funky B, man, they got you playing with me. Meet me at the studio. I got to get now. He always would put it on the record. And he'll put it on the record. Wow. You know, and, and it was just more like, that's why, like, a lot of people took to him. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and the whole thing is that the reason why they gravitated because Slim, <clears throat> Slim, him and C had that same aura to where like with them two, they, they kind of, I'm not going to say they bought peace between the Cali and the Magnolia, but you have one from the Cali and one from the Magnolia on the same label. So they bought a kind of, they made it at ease. Yeah. Cause you know, uh, C took Slim, even though they was always in and out, the projects, each one of them, but you know, it was more with C like, you know, y'all know what this is, that's my nigga, you know what I'm saying? So you know, we, you know, we gonna, you know, nothing, nothing shit gonna pop back here with this. Yeah. Y'all gonna, gonna accept them as I do. And they were the same with Slim, because none of them was scared to go and eat a project. Yeah, yeah. You know, but they were just letting them know that, you know, you know, all of this shit that's going on. Now, we couldn't do, they couldn't do anything about certain people back there. You know what I'm saying? But as long as them two was together, they bought some kind of truce. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and that, you know, that that's how it was. But, you know, it was always the respect. You know what I'm saying? Always. Well, let me ask you this, man. Um, you know, last time I came down, um, you you uh, definitely linked me with Mac, man, and I was so happy about that because he's such a humble guy, you know. Um, how was you know how happy how I know he was happy about him coming <clears throat> home, but how was it for him coming home and then you seeing him before he left and knowing him, you know what I mean? And to see how he is now and just him, you know, interacting on the stage and all right. that good stuff, man. Well, one thing I didn't get a chance to see, but Boosie saw it. Okay, was um his first time hitting the stage. Okay, you uh, you didn't get to see it. I didn't get to see that. Ah, dog it. Boosie How did, was it, dog. Boosie? You got to give it up. I mean, the thing was, it was different because the people really did, like, it was a surprise. Yeah. That was yeah. one part. The other part was he came out in all black. Okay. And he had his hat tilted to where you couldn't see his face. Okay. So what ended up happening, you know, once the song started coming on, people just had to warm up to warm it. Warm up to it. Yeah. So the thing was, when you remember Mac, you remember 
camouflage. Right. Yeah, yeah. But he came out in all black. He came out in all black. He wanted to leave the camouflage behind. Yeah, yeah. So we did that show and we he ended up being added on to the rest of the shows. Okay. So him and P had a conversation, whatever that conversation was. We got ready for the next show. He still was trying to, you know, he still was trying to find his way to get back to, he, want, he, he wanted to leave the camouflage because that's what got him put into the situation he was in. Yeah. We're going to jail because they listening to what he's saying but not understanding what he's saying. Okay. He's a storyteller. Yeah, right. So, his biggest and KL song on this one, he was there. When we did DC, which I kn I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. I know, I know what's going to happen, but I'm not knowing what's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> because by then, the conversation is had after we do that one show, that P is going to bring him out now. Oh, okay. Because it's like him, him coming out, the way, the way the show was done, <clears throat> every artist came out individually. So it was like, well, you know, it's not good to bring him out because that's kind of leaving him on the island. And it, it's like throwing a kid in front of a packed house that... They they have stage fright. Yeah. So by the time he didn't he didn't did a couple shows, so he's starting to get his swag back. The show we did in DC, he come back out there. This motherfucker got camouflage on. <laughs> and after that, he was back. Wow. But you know, and, and I ask you that because of how not so much as the crowd reaction, but just his demeanor. Because it's a challenging thing to come from that. And yeah. I know from personal experience, you know, to come out of that situation mm -hmm. and then have to deal with people on any type of level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you've you been here so long and then you yeah. come out here, but then to stand in, the, in front of a stage like that and yeah. deal with people and you ain't been doing it, that's got to be something yeah. else. I, I got to get him back on the show. Yeah, because <laughs> cause cause the thing was, and he actually said this to me, and he said in in some interviews that he's done since he's been home, you know, like you got to think, you've been locked up for twenty one years, something you didn't even do, and then you come home, and it's it's almost to a point like I just mentioned, you've been shoved in front of thousands and thousands of people, so it's like. You, you know, it's like, you like, ooh, you, you still nervous because the whole thing is, you know, you been locked up, so you really not trusting your surroundings. Not at all. <clears throat> you know, yeah, I know KL, yeah, I know Boosie, yeah, I know Mia, yeah, I know this person, that person, and the other, but fuck, I don't know about this motherfucker, I don't know about this one, yeah. that one, that one. Yeah, that's so real. So you it's really... You really got to be around long enough to be like, okay, take a deep breath. I'm good now. Yeah, yeah. And it, it just took him some shows because he, I mean, the thing about Mac, Mac was gone 21 years, but Mac is literally doing his shows with no vocals on them. Right. TV wow. track. Yeah, he don't rap over his he lyrics. He don't rap over his lyrics. And I understand why after interviewing him because he, he, he would never do that. Not not him. Well, he, just just think about the gap that they had from how we was recording then within 21 years to how they're doing it now. now. Yep. So it wasn't he had to just ease off and he was, nah, he had to literally go from here to here. Wow. You know, so. And doing it. And doing it. That's you know all. What I'm saying? That's so, all. Yep. Shout out to Mac, man. Like I said, I, I just, I love the fact that I see him, you know, I see him doing his thing, man. And I know already this internet and these podcasts and all this stuff is right. needed now that people don't realize it's changed now. Yeah. You know, these are things that we do 
not only to educate the culture, but also to keep people to understand where our people are at when it comes down to the entertainment and stuff. So it's just a dope thing to be able to see him and be able to see him moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so when you look at this Baton Rouge area, and, and, and I thought it was 45 minutes to, <laughs> to New Orleans. I'm like, it ain't but 45 minutes. It's a little longer than that. Depend on how Depending you on drive. Where you're going. Oh, y'all drive bad. Yeah. I already see what's going on. Y'all, y'all speed, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. <laughs> it depends on what part of New Orleans you're going to. That okay, part, okay. And how fast you're driving. Right. And the traffic. Yeah, 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 that traffic. Now, you're trying to hurry and get your ass to that airport. <laughs> but see, you got to think about this here. Today, you dealing with a, a Saints home game traffic. That's yeah, what it yeah, was. Yeah, because they played Atlanta today. So when when when, they, when when the Saints have a home game, you people coming as far as Freeport. They coming to, to that yeah, game. Yeah. yeah. Like they come from Mississippi. I wonder why all them folks was leaving. I was like, man. Right. Yeah. I told my yeah. wife, it's supposed to be 45 minutes. Yeah. Like, it, was, it ain't yeah, 45 yeah, yeah, minutes. Yeah, you, and then, you, then you, like, you don't see that kind of traffic on a Sunday. No, no, you don't see that. Mm-mm. So that's well, a yeah. Saints game. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and then you gotta look at the Saints and the Pelicans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then the Pelicans out here burning up now, you know yep. what I'm saying? So, you know And then it's the holidays too. So you, you the, factor in Saints because the Pelicans playing away. So you factor in Saints game. Then you factor in Holiday shopping. Holiday shopping. And then you factor in then Second line, Second line and all kind of other shit going on in New Orleans. Damn. That's why I was that's why I was at that one hour and a half. So man, so so top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Number one. You know what? <laughs> I'm asking him his top three. You gave me your top three. I remember you he had that road hill down. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Number one. Top three. Of all time. Of dead all or time, alive. Dead or alive. Number one. Nah. Oh, you want to go number that, three? That's, you want to do three that, first? That's Baton Rouge or that's just any That's anywhere. Any genre. Any genre. We do this on every episode, so number one. Shit. No, no, no. We, yeah, you get to that, but I, I, I want to know your Baton Rouge rating. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. Nah, I wasn't gonna do me. it. I wasn't gonna do it like that because I don't know if he wanna make those choices. I'm a, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you my five. Oh, well, five. <laughs> I'm give you no, five. no, my wife ain't going for that. Hold on. You want three? See, that's our rule. Wait, yeah. did we go through that with me? Oh yeah, yeah. That, we do you the three we do three for Baton Rouge and then we give you another oh, top yeah, three. Yeah, I did say all so, time. Yeah. All right, my three for for Baton Rouge. I'm gonna do first. let's do uh, everybody first. Okay, let's go. Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's a that's a regular one we get. You did Michael Jackson too. Yeah. <laughs> Number two is Prince. Yeah. Tupac. That ain't, that ain't bad. He did the three great. It's damn near like like yours. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's and, and, crazy. And see, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you something. Mine was Rakim. Yeah. Then yeah. Tupac. Yeah. 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 So and yeah. then who was the third? One? Who was the third one? He did. You did Michael Jackson. No, too. we did producers. We did producers. That's what we did. We did producers. Yeah, we, we had to producers. do producers. So, 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 who is your top three in Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge. Let's go, man. Oh. Let's make the world. Let's make the world. <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> top three in Baton we Rouge. We get mine out the way. Love of my favorite Baton Rouge artist. Oh yeah. Off That's top. Off top. Yeah, he he's definitely got All that time. one spot. Wow. Yeah. Top three Baton Rouge artists of all time. I'm gonna say C Lo. Yeah. Because he started the gangster shit. <clears throat> okay. Who you say C Lo? C Lo. Because he started the gangster C-Lo. shit. C I'ma say MC Nero, baby. Uh, oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. A full name Nero. Uh, yeah, full name Nero. <laughs> Because he started, God bless his soul, so he started the whole dancing part right. of the Baton Rouge sound. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, fuck. It's, been, it's a hard one here. Yeah, I mean, bro. Who shit. Because you got to get everybody else out. Just you, this, this is the last one. 
Fuck. I fuck with Boosie. <laughs> but I'm gonna say Max Manelli. Wow. And the, Max, re- and Max. the reason why I'm gonna say Max because Max is that lyrical. He lyrical for one. Yeah. And then he can give you those passionate boosted type records also. Wow. Plus he and all boosted for his album. Wow. See, you know all the ins and outs yeah. and the behind the scenes yeah. and everything. So it means a lot yeah. when you say this because I know you watching it from a different angle. Yeah. Me on the outside looking in going to say easily. What cuz you ain't you ain't counting the youngsters. The youngsters gets no no No, nah, I'm not I'm not going to say I don't count like I don't count nobody out. But it's just the way I look at it on on both angles. You know what I'm saying? Like when when I really look at who done what, right? For the youngsters to have. That's right. The foundation. Yeah, I look for I look at the foundation, and right. I mean, it's many <clears throat> more other artists. You know, you have your B lows. Right. You have Down Bad Entertainment. True. You have Big School Sam I Am. And the Jigalators that started the whole jig shit. Oh yeah. So it's like it's like. Have it been a female to come out of here yet? Not, not even one. Not one. Wow, that'll be hard right there, boy. That's history. You no, know, it's, it's a couple they, females. They have more spitters now. Yeah, they it have a couple be, females now. It gotta now. be something that's gonna touch the world, though. Yeah. We know that. Yeah, it's a couple females because I mean I do the music too. Like what Khaled does, and is a female that I fuck with. Her name is Titanic, and she like she did a record that I saw on Mouse Page because Mouse produced the song, and the bitch go hard. You know what that F N <clears throat> F and F yeah glow when it when it hit. That's what I'm telling you about when it, when a when a hit take off and you can't yeah. control it. Yeah, right. And you just all of a sudden, boom, it just, and nothing stops it and the world just receives it. Yep. Right. That's what I'm talking about right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? This, and that's what I like about the internet and just all, the, anything can go crazy at any yep. time. If it's good enough, the internet will tell you, the people will tell you, this is what it is. Yep. Right. You, you just said that. Yep. He said, there ain't it, nothing it, you can do about it. Ain't nothing you can if do. The, if the streets don't approve it. Yep. You know. Cause, Cause, I can literally tell you the different records. Like the one thing with me, I keep it honest with the artists. Your shit hot, I'm a fuck with it. Your shit ain't hot, it ain't hot. Go back and record another song. But that's the best way to be. Yeah, because my whole thing is, what, what, the respect I gain <clears throat> from the the artists. You know, before. This era of, and I'm not talking about the era of the artist, but the era of just putting music on social media. Everybody knew you want your music heard, you gotta take it to Boosie. Yeah, true. That's real. Like, you know, when the gang, because that's, that's what they was called, the gang, they came up with the jiggling. They came to boost it. Tur- like I told you earlier, Turk. Yeah. Boost it, where you at? I'm finna bring you this brand new boost. I'm finna bring you this brand new whoever. Mm-hmm. Brand new Fox. Like, I broke Fox, wipe me down. The original version. The original version. And my partner, DJ Jelly. Yeah. At that time, he was DJing for, uh, for Unk. And he was down here for a station summer jam event it was like man what the fuck is that I said it's Fox call white man out man nigga and like I say with no computers yeah yeah it was CDs he's like man I need that shit man I said here I already got another, you know I already had a couple more copies I gave him that shit shit took off I smoke I drink from magic yeah it was before the young bloods yeah it was boosted and young bleed he called me when he recorded. I said, man, this shit, horrible. Because it wasn't placed together yet. 
He called me Christmas night. Let me check it out. Oh, this bitch a gold nine, nigga. Bitch was put together. Everything was put together. I blew that. I broke that bitch one night. The first wow. night that I played it. You say young bleed. Yeah, how you do that there? That's my boy, man. <laughs> yeah, young bleed. I interviewed him. Uh, I always keep forgetting to say that. You, I think I said it on our interview. I interviewed him vir virtually, but he talked about that that song, man, and yeah. and I talked to him. He was out of state somewhere, and I don't know how me my brother yeah. ended up getting on the phone with him, and me and him just you know we talked, and this was I don't know if this was before uh, Boss Talk even started, and then all of a sudden when I started it, he was one of the first ones, man, and just that whole that song right there, man. I think Ricky Smile and everybody used that song, man. That song yeah. was big, man. Right. Oh, I forgot to add. You was go. You said level. I gotta ask you about that. Like, what made you think or feel that he's the biggest? You know, your number one. Who level? Yeah, I needed an explanation on that because you said it and you the ain't club. The club told me. Oh, the, the club. DJs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the club and the DJs told me. Like, yeah. Let me tell you, level. He's crunk. He's loud, and you gotta listen. You cannot listen to him. Wow. Yep. And he's wild in real life like he is on the records. He got that energy. He got energy. His character is the same on the records in yep. person. Like, all of them are though. All like, of them. And, all and, of them. And, and but see, it just if you let him if you let him if you literally feature him on your record, you can forget you, it. You you better just put him on the fucking hook. Cause I actually <laughs> this cat I was dealing with, Lil Cali. That's my dog. That's my bro. They did a record called Money Right. Oh, man. And he hated, like, oh. Lil Cali did not like that record. He hated that record. And I'm like, nigga. <clears throat> and at that time, he was doing, he had, he was with Asylum. Lil Cali was. And they was trying to do, they was trying to go through the whole but for some reason, Asylum always wanted to run everybody through Boosie and Trill. Yeah, right. Because that's they was hot. And I understood. But I'm like, nigga, this is the fucking record. He had a record with OJ the Juice Man. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's cool if, you know, if you finna push it out there in Atlanta. That shit ain't gonna work here. This the fucking record. I said, you need to do one or two things. Either take that nigga verse off and just leave him on the hook, or leave his verse on, but you do another hook, another verse. He left that bitch like it was. And it became his record. And that bitch became his record. Just took off, he, it took, he took it over. That bitch goes so hard. <laughs> and you know another bad thing about that too is because when it became his record, they're not gonna even book who the original artist is. Yeah. They gonna exactly. book who the record bang with. Yeah. That's hard, yeah. man. That's just, hard. Just think if if Lil John is is on the record, they don't know who the fuck you is, nigga. We finna book Lil John. That's right. right. And that that's how the shit that's was. That's how it was. That's how it was. Man, it, but like I said, when you think about just the the, the way that, that these artists are, you gotta say you gotta tell me some young artist that's coming up right now because it's always a young artist. Yeah. Who right. the hot young artist is right now in Baton Rouge that's that you seeing that you 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 know that he got the potential to, you know you know, just just pretty much take off. There's so many different ones, but sometimes they just get lost in the sauce. They just get lost because, like, I'm gonna give you a prime example. A little dude named T.G. Commas. <clears throat> he had a, he got a record called "Turn Me Up." Mm -hmm. And it's called "Turn Me Up." Be real because uh, Be yeah. Real is the dude that did the trick. Yeah, I I, I see him. I seen him a few. So yeah. he done been, you know, he he fuck with Bebe. I fuck with Bebe. But you know, he got a couple more records, but. You know, sometimes it be certain records that don't have the 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 Glorilla effect. Okay. You know, they hot here, but nowhere else. Correct. You know, like <clears throat> Ride 49 is another artist. He from New Orleans. He hot here, but is that record popping anywhere else? 
So, you know, you have artists that have songs that pop in certain cities, but don't pop nowhere else. Wow. You know, would Mo3 be as popular in Baton Rouge if he wouldn't have fucked with Boosie? We don't know. I don't think so. So I don't know because it. See, I don't know. That's see, and that's you the don't thing. know because you know you, you can't know. know. You can't yeah. know now. <laughs> but it's just, it's just the whole aspect of sometimes when you align yourself with a certain person in that city, it can work. Because I see so many artists. Like I look at look at I think T Real. Yeah, that's my boy. Like, fuck with him hard. Yeah. But he did a song with Boosie, but shit, ain't nobody checking for him here. He out of Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and he, he hanging out in Atlanta. Yeah. He, he become on Boss Talk a lot. Yeah, so, uh, so it's just certain artists, it's just like level, as high as level is here in New Orleans <clears throat> and in certain parts of the South. Would New York fuck with it? Would California fuck with it? Would the Midwest fuck with it? I get it. But what about it's somebody else too? Fat? Ain't it Fat? The one that passed away? Lil Fat, yeah. Lil Fat. Lil Fat, yep. RIP Lil Fat. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely got to get a story from you on him, like when his music first hit the scene down here. When Fat, when fat first hit the scene, he was a part of 3D. Okay. Which was a group that was put together. It was Fat, dude named Shell out of New Orleans, and Mouse. Okay. Who was the producer yeah, also. Yeah. So they ended up, they were supposed to drop an album. I don't think it ever came out as an album or a mixtape. Not to my knowledge anyway. But Fat just had that, that little young swag to him. And it was like he was always under Boosie. So he was getting that game from him. And then he ventured off. And then they started putting him out as a solo artist, too. Okay. <clears throat> and it's like Fat just. Like Fat just. Like Fat, fat could have. He could have been. That next, like how Boosie was when he was young. Right. Because they was molding him. On the bleed. Un to do that. Wow. So it's just like really, you know, he just, he just unfortunately he got, you know, he got killed. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he got killed at like, it, it wasn't at the height of his career, but, you know, it was just, he had so much going for him, and then that happened. Yeah, the momentum, kind of like how Slim was. Slim yeah. had that momentum. Had that momentum. Yeah. Soon as it was about to, yeah. Same as little Snoop. I just yeah. interviewed his mo his mother, yeah. little Snoop. Yeah, the Snoop had signed his deal with uh, Meek and with Meek. Yeah, with and it was about to it was about to happen, <laughs> yeah. and, and then that happened. he was dead. Yep. So that like that's a that's a trick that's a thing that trickles down, man. Yeah. Like, man, I don't know why it's crazy. Is is like like I say, I mean. You really gotta. You really gotta keep your eye open for everybody that's that's around you because you got people that want to see you win, but you got a lot of motherfuckers that don't want to see you win. Yeah, man, that's it's something like it's like a all I want rappers sometimes. Yeah. I I, I want to ask K L like how important was it when you guys was coming out with the sound? I know y'all was in Cali and everywhere, but for for the New Orleans Baton Rouge area like for it to when it hit New Orleans you knew it was going to hit Baton Rouge or either before you went up to L LA and that when you was doing your music mm -hmm. the influence did how how important was it for it to hit this Baton Rouge area one thing that i could tell you about New Orleans and Baton Rouge music is this you got to think club first out the gate out the gate They'll catch on to what you're saying, but if it if it don't appeal directly to the club, you know what I'm saying? It got to appeal to the club. It, it have to. No. It have to. You know what I'm saying? It is definitely our music is straight 
just think about it. What commercial music have you ever heard come from Baton Rouge or New Orleans? Now, Bling Bling was one. That was hard, though. It, it went crazy because all over the place. Outside of that, it's all street shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it just caught way to where like it's nothing and, and make them say, on. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. But other than that, <clears throat> everything is always... Either street shit, street shit, or ass popping shit. Right. Think yeah. about it. Down for my niggas. Yeah. Back that ass Back up. Back that ass up. I need a high girl. Wobble wobble. I mean. Yeah. Even. Slow motion for me. All that shit. <laughs> well, you, I, I could say this here too that white men down could have been way bigger than what it was if it had a stronger machine behind it. I agree with that too. I seen, I could I could see that. If White Men Down had the same push as independent. Back That Ass Up. If it would have had the same push as Independent. Right, Independent. Ind independent was, independent was big. Crazy. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> if they had, if they had that same push as goddamn Back that ass up. Cause it, it, back that ass up is the official ass shaking record. Yep. But Luke started it. For Gotta sure. give him that credit. For sure. <laughs> but when it comes down to straight dance, ass shaking record, back that ass is gonna be the first record that comes to mind. Yep. Wow. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard for another ass shaking record. As a matter of fact, we was at a BMI event and backed that ass up. It was like five, six years ago. As a matter of fact, it was when, when Mystical, you know, did a thing with Cash Money. He was invited to do a tribute to Juvie. He had to do the Juvie High record, right? Yeah. And they rewarded they, they rewarded Cash Money. Um, and this was before streaming. Okay. Back that ass officially had over a billion spins on radio. Wow. Wow. I gotta ask you something that, <clears throat> and I gotta ask you, cause I said I would, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Yesterday I was uh, Big Boz, you remember that? He say, ask, not just you, but anybody on No Limit, mm -hmm. how, you know, how he looked at, how, 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 what they thought about him. Now Boz, let me tell you something, Boz, that's what Bi he told me. Boz, Boz was P, voice of reason. Okay. <laughs> um, Boz was like, pretty much his, his pressure on people when, he, when, when somebody, they'll, pee, be, they'll have people, people will tell people like, I, pee, I don't know about that. I think you need to think about it. Boz was like, nah, fuck that, nah, nah, bro. No, don't even go there. That, that ain't it, man. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, it, it was like Boz, he, he was like P voice of reason, you know what I'm saying? Boz was able to be the one to, if you, if, 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 if an artist couldn't get P to listen, say Boz, bro. Say P, bro, let me tell you something, I want some real shit, bro. Cause sometimes hearing it from him, P hearing it from him is different from yeah, hearing from it from you. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not that 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 Pete didn't respect their word, but you sometimes know, it just come, it sound better coming from Bob. <clears throat> being being in a being in the position that Bob yeah. is in, correct. Right? You know what I'm saying? And then you know it's like, um, Bob he was straight straight about no limit. You know what I'm saying? Pete was Period. too, like. Baz and Mia is my son, God, mother, and Godfather. Wow. And serve and his and his ex-wife was the God mother, the God mother and godfather of my second daughter. Wow. We kept everything. In the family. In the family. In the family. Everything. Your character though. And, and, but you know, <laughs> your character though. That's my dog though. Yeah. Right? That's my dog. Like he can tell you about that part. Okay. Right. Just like I can tell you about me meeting <clears throat> bars on the other side, you know, like on the tours and doing yeah, the, you yeah. know, 
like whenever P would do a show somewhere or he'll be in LA <coughs> and I'm in LA, he buy that business, but he he a character too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd be surprised, just... like you'd be surprised like fucking Soldier Slim and Snoop. You talking yeah. about some fucking comedians. <laughs> It, it's just certain things about these fucking artists, like, yep. you know, it's things you will only see within our circle that you will never see outside of. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they always talk about when P, I guess Snoop was brought down here and they gave him a house and he had everybody here and there, you know, mm -hmm. and, or when they or when y'all went to L.A., but <clears throat> but it, it's just, it's something about the way you guys moved that, that that's just extraordinary to me. As right. a team, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Seemed like y'all stayed pretty close, you know what I mean, together, in a way to where y'all understood where everybody was at. It was, man, look, you talking about a blueprint of how shit was structured and ran to where, like, I had friends that was in, um, that worked at Def Jam. Yeah. And they used to come tell me, man, shooting shit about, um, Cause it's like every Tuesday or Wednesday they do like what they call staff meetings. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? To so be like, okay, what's new this week? You know what I'm saying? And no limit being who they were at the time. Well, what's going on in New Orleans? And they were like, um, and they had some hate. Like, yeah, man, these country motherfucker, blah blah blah, and. Of a road, like, well, y'all, y'all need to find out what these fucking country motherfuckers doing, cause they killing our ass out here. And ever since, because everything, like we said, in house, no limit never had to go outside for features. If, if, like, when, when, when Serv did a song with Pun, Mia did a song with Fat Joe, and Foxy, and Foxy, they specifically wanted them on this record. Wow. And even when Silk did the song with Jay. Yeah. But if you notice after that, Red Man and Met the Man became a group. Yeah. They was about to do the Murder Inc. with Jay, Ja, and um, Jay X. X. Yeah, damn X. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would have been hard, yeah. man. To where they stayed within their circle of Def Jam forming groups. Yeah. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and yeah. the same with, same with Cash Money. Everything was in-house. Production, videos. Everything. Studios. Everything. Man, it's a different, yeah, I mean, people cut from a different cloth during those times, man. Because a lot of people didn't even know that they studio was right there. Right. I, like, yeah, he like, told me that. Like yeah, two, he... like, what, like, couple buildings down. Yeah. That's where it all started. Wow. Right back. Back right there. <clears throat> in Baton Rouge. Okay, you saw the Marriott, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the building across the lawn? That's that's the old, that's where No Limit Studio was. Where the No Limit Studio was. The, was the original? That was the first one. Yeah, it was the, the first, first one. one. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you see this big ass building, and, 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 and true story, when we set up and finally moved in that building from, from California, mm -hmm. Cause when we came down, we was recording between my basement on the parkway and by Carlos. So when P stationed up here, um, we moved in that building. So when that No Limit started rolling, rolling, and that entire building, after five o'clock, the whole unit of the AC system will cut off. But we are up in there and that motherfucker after five and it's fucking hot, motherfucker, and sweating. <laughs> Equipment getting fucked up, <laughs> tapes getting damaged. So he paid the electric bill for the entire building to keep the AC running every day, all day. Damn. Had to do it. Had to do it. That music, yeah, right? But that's how smart he was. He was, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the entire studio office was probably, you put that divider right here yeah. and close it off. Just it was this part. Just this part was the size of the, and probably a little smaller. Smaller than that. Smaller than that. I've never been in there, but I, I you know the building. I know the yeah. building, and I always used to ride by there and see them out <clears throat> in the wee hours of the fucking night. Right. <laughs> they had one, two, wait. Cause I think it was like what four rooms. It was the studio room, 
then Tavester room, then Pete room, and then a studio room in the little kitchen area. Yeah. Big enough just for a microwave. <laughs> Big enough just for a microwave. Damn. That's it. And that's and that that was the whole studio, the entire studio. Man, and and now you see, what, you know. That whole thing, man. Look what it blossomed into, man. Yeah. Changed the world, man. Change, changed my world. You know what I'm saying? The music, man, is something else, man. Hey, man, it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you, guys, man. Man, I got, man, I got to interview DJ Bootsy, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> man, thank you so much. Oh man, man thank you, man. You man hey, know. man, Boss Talk 101, man. Hey, he a regular, so I can't even. <laughs> can't, can't a regular, man. Like I, I got, I told, I don't care what album. I'm coming to see you. I'm gonna find you all anytime I'm, I'm down here, man. All I'm gonna tell you is, if KL giving me the call, I know it's official. Oh yeah, man. We ain't, gonna, we ain't never letting him go. He ain't, gonna, he ain't gonna never call me about. About no type of BS. Nah, man, Mr. Serve, I want to say last time he supposed to bet on that thing. He was on me about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like, I don't know how I didn't get it. I, I looked at the man, I supposed to bet on I said, man, I told him I was here. I just go, what he told me. <laughs> He's like, I didn't get to hear back from him, but I just enjoy it, man. Love the music, love the culture. Yeah. And I think it gives our, our people, our children, just the people that watch mm -hmm. understanding and the development yeah. of the foundation. That way they can understand truly what how it happened. Without this, they don't understand. Exactly. That's why I love it so much, to be honest with and you. And like I told you earlier, you know, you know, your viewers and stuff, you know, if they want to find out more about the Baton Rouge music scene, like I told you earlier, Diamonds in the Dirt. Diamonds in the Dirt. It's on Tubi and all other, you know, different platforms and stuff like that, and they're getting ready. <laughs> they were actually working on. I ain't gonna say they're getting ready to drop it, but they working on part two. All right, give me just just what did what did Pimp C mean to you, man? Let me tell you something. When we was locally, well, Pimp wasn't there, Bone was there, but just the creative thought, his unselfishness, because people don't know Pimp is a bad motherfucking producer, man. Correct. Yep. They don't talk about that about him. Yeah. Pimp did all, him, him and N.O. Joe, I, you know, N.O. Joe was with him. Mm -hmm. But Pimp is a bad motherfucker on, on, on that production. They don't, they don't talk about him as a producer. They talk about them lyrics. They yeah. talk about them lyrics, but when, it, when, when you listen to them fucking beats, that's him. That's him on them. Yeah, and N.O. Joe there with him, but it, it, it's Pimp, did, man, they don't talk more about Pimp, about him as a producer, man. Man. Unselfish. Because I'll I, I never forget when we did Kick, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you talked about that. I never forget man. it, man. Like, he he waited for me to come do the drums on that record. Just so, because he didn't need me on it. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, since I'm here, I want the pound involved with the record. Hey, that's hard. I'll never forget. Soon as I walk and step foot in the studio, KLC, come do that drum shit you do, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Man, same thing to you. What, 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 give me a, a favorite song or a, a situation. Man, like with, I'm gonna piggyback off of what he's talking about with Pimp because a kick though, that's one of my favorite. Your favorites? My favorites right there. But... I think one of the ones I truly love from Pimp that didn't involve No Limit mm -hmm. was having things. Hey. Ooh. The thing went hard, didn't it? Man. It's just. Them boys are something like, else on that one. And it's like he say, you know, he, you know, you get certain producers slash artists that get the credit, but he gets no credit. And he was a hell of a producer. Yeah, that's hard. <clears throat> Thank you guys, man. R.P. So Pimp and Mama West. Man, what yeah. you saying, man? Thank you guys, man. Hey, man, check it, man. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk.